it's easy being petty Mama used to tell me, gotta use you when you're ready Cause I ain't working on my own timing Ain't got no diamonds on me, but I stay shining Yeah, yeah They say the world would be a better place if we take out the hate Yeah, uh, let's keep it real, it'd be better if we just subtract the fake Yeah, so be a light up on my path and a lamp under my feet I know my faith strong, but my flesh still kinda weak When that victory be looking like the verge of defeat And I feel that disrespect, help me turn my other cheek and say Sticks and stones may break my bones But your words can't hurt me No, you just can't hurt me, no I ain't been right more than I've been wrong And it still can't hurt me No, it just can't hurt me, no No, you just can't hurt me No, you just can't hurt me, no, no, no So many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I'll I do it again. Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me, everything is on me. Do you matter what? Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. Happy Monday, y'all. Good morning, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. It is Monday, May 24th, 2021. James, DJ Exclusive, how's, how's it going, man? Pretty good, sir. How about yourself, brother man? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. We had a great time yeah. Friday night at the patron party. It oh, was, yeah. <laughs> it was good, man. We had a lot of folks who showed up. People danced through the entire night, and you kept the party rocking. I almost made it to the end. I almost made it to the you end, did. which is rare. I, I I checked out. I think it was about 15 minutes before you guys checked out, but I, I, I yeah. did the best that I could do, man, as an old, <laughs> old man myself. But um, that said, good morning to everybody in the chat rooms, all the different platforms where we're streaming, YouTube, Face, Twitch, Twitter. Um, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. If you're listening to the podcast after the fact, you can still hit the like, share, and subscribe button and make sure that you spread the word about like it or not. Um, I want to jump right into this, this, uh, this, this news, James. Uh, I want to begin with the hard reality about the United States of America. Hmm. We are a nation with far too many self-interested, individualistic morons who are literally going to ensure that our nation will be dealing with COVID-19 for the foreseeable future. On the one hand, the sorry excuses for human beings are demanding that everyone go back to normal. And on the other hand, they're literally taking every step possible to make sure that we never get back to normal because they politicized this pandemic from day one. First, shutting down to prevent the spread of the beginning at the beginning of the pandemic. Shutting down was politicized. And so the virus spread uncontrollably, leading to over 33.1 million infections. And as if that wasn't enough, they politicized wearing masks. And now we're quickly approaching 600,000 people who, are di who have died from COVID-19. And as if that wasn't enough. They, we have now that we have this highly effective vaccine, there is a new push to discourage vaccines at all costs. Getting vaccines is so politicized. Compare the following two maps put together by CNN, which shows that vaccine rates by states is almost identical to the election map of 2020. I want to repeat that. The map that we're going to put on your screen right now, you can see on the one side, on the left hand side, it's the electoral map from 2020. On the right hand side, it's the vaccination rates. And as you can see, you can tell who's vaccinated basically by how they voted. Now, normally I would say that correlation does not mean causation, but the variables leading to this vaccination rate phenomenon are 100 percent politically related. It is so destructive. It is so detrimental to us getting out of this pandemic. But here we are with a nation that has fully politicized the fact of a vaccination even being effective or not. Now, take a look at this next graphic from the CDC. On the left, you can see that the pharmaceutical companies who are, by the way, not heroes. Right. But they have delivered and been paid for enough vaccines for every adult in this country to have at least a single dose. And in most cases, their second dose. 
But of the 357 million doses delivered, only 285 have been administered, and this includes those of us who have gotten our second dose. Now, despite having enough doses for all American adults to have had at least their first shot, we have yet to cross the 50 percent threshold of one dose vaccinations in adults over 12 and not even 40 percent of adults who have gotten both vaccinations. And these vaccines are now going to waste. Why? Because of the unbelievable, unbelievably stupidity of American politics and politicians. I want you to listen to one of the biggest stars, one of the rising stars in the Republican Party and who is a sitting member of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, and now at this point, the level of stupidity has gotten so high that she's able to compare wearing a mask and getting a vaccination to the literal Holocaust. Take a listen. In. Now we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Now, this is in response to Nancy Pelosi essentially saying that we need to quarantine away the people in the Congress who have not been vaccinated and refuse to get vaccinated because we can't trust them. We can't trust them to operate on an honor system. They don't want to wear a mask. They don't want to get the vaccine, but they want to be free to come and spread their COVID laced breath across the country. And it gets worse during an interview on talk radio. Senator, a sitting senator by the name of Rand Paul spread perhaps the most insidious form of anti vaccination rhetoric disguising his attack on the vaccine as his quote unquote personal decision while spreading the idea that surviving COVID-19 is sufficient enough to produce the antibodies to, but it's not to not catch it again. This is what he's saying. He's saying that if you get COVID-19 and you survive it, that it gives you enough antibodies to not catch it again. And this is simply not true. Listen to this moron. Being hospitalized or getting very sick, I've just made my own personal decision that I'm not getting vaccinated because I've already had the disease and I have natural immunity now. Um, but that should be my, you know, in a free country, you would think people would honor, you know, the idea that each individual would get to make their medical decisions, that it wouldn't be Big Brother coming and telling me, you know, what I have to do. Are they going to also tell me I can't have a cheeseburger for lunch? Now, here's to the Darwin Awards. Perhaps he will catch it again. And that would be on him because he is putting this country at risk because people are taking this message and literally saying that if they've had it, then they're good. They don't have to. But there have been cases of individuals who caught COVID-19 and then caught it a second time and died the second time. Here's looking to you, Senator Rand Paul. But it gets even worse. Listen to this pastor, Pastor Greg Locke, as he gets excited and preaches the quote unquote gospel of Jesus Christ which is basically to him nothing more than an anti-vax message. Take a listen in. I have not changed my stance. I haven't softened my stance. I have strengthened strictly my stance against the vaccine. It is not FDA approved. I don't care what Pfizer, I don't care what any of the four groups do out there. Look, if you think, all right, now we're going to jump into some realms. For me. If you think for one minute that those political elites actually got that vaccination, you are smoking meth in your mama's basement. Bunch of fake liars is what they are. They didn't shoot nothing in their arm but a bunch of sugar water. Now, look, I know some of you like, my goodness, what am I going to? My boss told me that if I don't get the vaccination, that I'm going to lose my job. I can write you a religious exemption and we will sue their stinking pants off. We will sue their pants off. They can't do this is America, not China. This is America. They can keep their stinking sheep shot. Now, I'm just giving you a chance for somebody to get on out of here, praise God. But the parking lot's packed. You can't go nowhere know how. You stuck till I'm done. <laughs> you stuck till I'm done. Now, I'm doing my best not to laugh at this moron, right? Because of the seriousness of the issue. Now he has an, an entire congregation full of people who look like they're walking comorbidities who are going to take his advice and not get the vaccine. And so while he's preaching this revival, this tent revival, he's going to probably be preaching a, fear, a series of funerals because of his sermons. Now, that said, there's a lot of people out here who are spreading messages of an, the anti-vax message because they want to make it a personal choice. Fine, whatever. They want to say, oh, the, 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 the side effects are so terrible. You know what's worse than the side effects? Death. 
and the number of people who have died in this country from COVID-19, it is going it quickly approaching 600,000 individuals. And we're never going to be able to get back to some sense of normalcy because of how political this has become. And the fact that you can tell a person whether or not they got vaccinated by who they voted for just shows you how utterly destructive this country really is. Before we discuss this, I just want to close out with this one clip from Scott Sice, who basically said it way better than I ever could. Let's play it. I'm not going to get the vaccine then die. What do we do, argue with you? I'm not on the debate team, this isn't mock trial. Aren't you worried about the side effects? I'm worried about the disease. Well, they're tracking you through the microchip. They're tracking you through the phone you're watching this on. Right. Get the vaccine. <laughs> then die. Did you die, yeah, Rand Paul? Just, just die. Did you, did, did, you, did you die from the side effects, Jimmy Dore? All these people, all these people out here talking about the vaccine, did you die? Because if you didn't, then don't say nothing to me. Anyway, Bruh, James, I I I, I could have sworn at that at that tent revival I was gonna hear white power, white power. <laughs> I can't believe oh, man. Bro, this man said that. Then your mama smoking meth in the basement. What the hell? <laughs> and they shot it, bro. They shot it like it was. And they, they man, listen. They shot it like uh, like it was a black preacher taking it to Calvary. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Early one Sunday morning, they were like, "Oh yes, no vaccine." Jesus, knowing like half of the people in the audience got diabetes, half of them in the audience, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how y'all gonna put y'all? They, they literally are preaching their own death, man. And, and you know, I, I don't have Dude. any remorse. So I'm like Scott Sykes at this point. Didn't die. Just Didn't you know die. what? Do the you world, do the world a favor, bro. <laughs> Because at this point, bro, I'm like the rhetoric that y'all are teaching right now. Oh just, man. Just, this die. I hope not. I don't wish that. I don't wish death on nobody. But at this point, it's in your own hands because yeah, you man. <laughs> <laughs> let's run. Let's run. I, I want to listen to that white power ceremony. Uh, he got so excited. He, he got, got so, so excited, bro. He was Dude. jumping up and down like he caught the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, he, he knew he was TD Jakes up there. He just <laughs> knew it. <laughs> get ready, get ready. Get, now you got to do it because you do it better. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get, get ready. For COVID nineteen. For COVID-19, dumbasses. Let's listen. Let's look into the, the preacher one more time. I have not changed oh, my man. stance. I haven't softened my stance. I have strengthened strictly my stance against the vaccine. <laughs> read, read the it is not uh, FDA approved. I don't care response. what Pfizer. I don't care what any of the four groups what do out Pfizer. there. Look, if you think, all right, now we're going to jump into some realms. You if you think for one minute that those political <laughs> elites actually got that vaccination, you are smoking meth in your mama's basement. <laughs> Bunch of fake liars is what they are. They didn't shoot nothing in their arm, but a bunch of sugar water. Your mom's basement. Bunch of liars. That's now what look, they are. I they know some of you are like, sugar water. What am I going to My boss told me that if I don't get the vaccination, that I'm going to lose my job. I can write you a religious exemption, and we will sue their stinking pants off. We will sue their pants <laughs> off. They can't get us. This is the right This America. They can keep their stinking sheep shot. <laughs> now, I'm just giving you a chance for some of you to get on out of here, praise God. But the parking lot's packed. You can't go nowhere, no how. You stuck till I'm done. <laughs> no, it's when he does the karate kick. You stuck till I'm done. Wait, I missed what that. What are they doing with the microphone? What are they doing? <laughs> no. He literally kicks. He, he, he kicks. He kicks in the air. Oh, my light isn't on above me, so I'm. Looking kind of pale these days, but good morning, everybody. <laughs> you, good you morning, did. Rebecca. Re did you wow. hear this? Oh. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, you think they got that color vaccine? You're smoking meth in your mama's basement. Basement. They ain't put none of your own but sugar water. And, that, and that's a pastor. <laughs> And that's a pastor, am I that's right? A pastor. Like that's a and that's a pastor, man. You All know, these this in that is congregation. Yeah, oh. this is this is this is really important for us to see because every time oh. Ben yeah. talks about the evangelicals, um, yeah. every time he talks about them, this is what we're talking about. These are the people at the forefront. These are the people preaching to the um, uh, their cults um, mm -hmm. and leading them right. right into injecting themselves with bleach, uh, <laughs> right to the doorsteps of the Capitol, um, uh. and praying <laughs> at the at the doorsteps of the Capitol before 
they go um, and charge the Capitol and plan to kill people in the name uh, of Donald Trump and not and, Jesus. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, these mm-hmm. these are the people that uh, uh, and these are the leaders. So it's very important that we see this because every time we discuss this, I mean, this is this ain't the only man. The look, the little churches over here where I stay at in the corners, <laughs> they do the same congregating. Thing. <laughs> congregating all through the damn panoramic this whole time. It's them. Oh, they be out there with the signs, everything. You know, so uh, mm. this ain't the only one. Even the little corner ones with the little corner store, folks <laughs> the little store with two front. teeth. Four <laughs> folks with two teeth in the front. Oh. And I ain't talking about the baby. It's like, it's literally this is... They, they got will, six teeth between they're them. They're spreading the same messages. Oh, my <laughs> this God. Is, and this is, Rebecca, this is you, it. You should take pictures next time. We should put their ass on uh, but, blast. <laughs> bro, let me tell you. <laughs> next time I should. Every Look, time I drive, yes. I'm like, how are they? Co-? And then they use, this is how I know that place is fake. Is this, I don't even know what they do there. Because I was driving by one another day, and I'm like, okay, it's a Sunday afternoon. It was a whole bunch of don't trucks in the um in the parking lot <laughs> just sitting there and I'm like, oh now they're renting it out to the hood people because the hood people couldn't find nowhere to, to, to congregate. And they went and hood and, and, and like had them all with their nice cars, like driving around oh, motorcycles, man. and they were all black. And it's a white church. So I just, you know, it's it's crazy. But you know, it's you, you know, know these people these people I'm I'm telling you, listen, I like listen, I'm venturing out. I'm getting bold and brave now. I, I go I go inside the stores now. I went inside Target yesterday. And why is it like it, it's also it's also you could in in Georgia, you could break it down on racial lines. Everybody yeah. black in that everybody black in that Target had on a mask. They had hand sanitizers. They were socially distancing and every every single white person here in the state of Georgia that was in that particular Target, they did not have a mask on, right? And oh. and, and, and it's like it's like you went to my Target then? You, well, no, right. it's just, it's just <laughs> they don't wear a mask. I mean, over here. pick a target. I know, right? they, I know if they was over here on Camp Creek Target, boy, they probably would have got their ass whooped by all the black people in there with masks. Listen, on. bro, I never felt so. <laughs> listen, I, I'm not even going. I'm not even. I'm not even playing with these people because they about to get people killed. Like, no, no, not about. Yeah. They've been getting people killed. Six hundred thousand people dead from this pandemic, and they still playing around, not want to wear masks. And oh, by the way, they don't want to get a vaccine. Oh, and by the way, they don't want to socially distance. They literally want and the right. And does your charge does your target provide? Because um, mine, uh, my target, they have it at the door. Provide, they have I it at do, the door, yeah. and 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 at first they were uh, urging the people who walked in to be like, "Hey, get mask this, are over here in mask. the corner, ma'am, ma'am, you can't come in without mm. your mask." I and I've seen this. I have the right. I, how do you know I'm not vaccinated? You know those. You know. Karen. Who'd you vote for? That's how I can Bob, tell. Bob cuts, right? <laughs> um, and so, and it, and it's always because it's a predominantly white one, but it's always a um, yeah, it's always a white, it's always a, a white person saying this, and it's always a, a cute little black girl at the door, probably uh, yep. about eighteen years old, yep. saying, yep. "Ma'am, can you just put on your mask? I have the right to be <laughs> in here. Who is? Remember, we we're talking about this. We gave you guys the education, the breakdown. Who is your manager?" <laughs> I mm-hmm. need to see the manager. So all that was going on. Manager. But they have it for you <laughs> at the door. They have the hand sanitizer station right there. They have yep. the mask. They have the whole setup of, you know, mm. COVID, about what it's about. They have a little card there if you want more, more information and things like that. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I hope that people and, and it's funny because it's like. How do we know that you're vaccinated? Just continue to wear the mask. Like, right. you know, a mask. and then free. when you go to your vacations and stuff, be free. Like, but as far as, you know, your area and, and where you live, like, just come on now. Like, oh, like, man, just be uh, mindful. Uh, these yes, people indeed. are so <laughs> these these people like it, it is. It's we're laughing. But y'all, 600,000 people are dead. Like, we got to laugh at this point because they still they, they want even more people to die. Like Rand Paul, man, he, he, he would and people will take advice from this man. But this is the guy who when he got COVID-19, he went swimming in the congressional pool. Right. While he had COVID-19. And and, and now they're wondering why Nancy Pelosi is like, hey, listen, no, we're going to have to segregate you guys. Those of you who don't get vaccinated, we're going to have to put you on the other side of the building to protect the people who, who are, Im- are immune. 
what is it uh <clears throat> immune deficient like people who are dealing with autoimmune diseases like people who have mm-hmm. pre-existing conditions like the vaccine is good it's effective but <clears throat> we really don't know that to what extent a person we don't have the data yet to show that people who are immune compromised are actually still susceptible to the effects of COVID-19 in other words they don't care they just don't care about who they kill anymore. They don't care. They literally want the right to be able to have their little nasty, stanky, janky breath all over everybody. They want the right to harm other people. And, and we just don't have we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that right. anymore because too many people are already dead. <clears throat> Real right quick, on. I'm going to read a couple of uh, Super Chats real quick, Ben. Yeah, yeah, well, I got yeah, some time right. here. Industrial Arts <laughs> said, Lord of mercy, we going to sue they pants off. <laughs> Industrial arts, I hate you. Tiger says, <laughs> wackos, white American Christians, conservatives, they oh, literally wow. act in the opposite way Jesus did. Absolutely bizarre. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jam Tomb said, I have a big mouth and tend to shame those women to buffer the store folks. <laughs> They're just doing their dang job, so I feel like it's mine to embarrass the bitch harassing the poor person at the door. <laughs> Is it bad that I kind of enjoy shaming the Karens? <laughs> no, not at all. God bless you. Not at Be all, safe Jam out there. <laughs> right. Be safe out there. And uh, Ronnie Angel said, go guys, and he said 99 stars on Facebook. Shout out to y'all. And shout out to Chuck Diesel in, in YouTube. He over here Slashing all kind of trolls this morning. That means we on our shit today. <laughs> Bro, man, listen, folks get real crazy over this vaccine. It's like the vaccine, go, it, you know, it, it, the side effects. Did you die? Right? Like then, they, then they're die? like, oh, they're, they're they're tracking us. Um, you have a cell phone <laughs> in your hand. That cell phone knows every one of your proclivities. That that cell phone everything. knows everything about you. It knows your your preference in porn. And you worried about a chip. You worried about a chip in a damn in a damn in vaccine. In a damn vaccine. I'm like, uh, you got a whole cell phone that you got location turned on on it and everything. And oh, you worried man. about them tracking yes. you through a microchip. Your your location is on on your phone. Like you so stupid. We you on Twitter posting stuff trying to troll people. All I gotta do is click on it. And I can see your exact location. These people and are so it. dumb. Uh, they, oh yeah, somebody else said, "Oh, it's the mark of the beast." Right, listen, right, I was. Oh, I just saw it, bro. <laughs> mark of the beast is this damn phone. Y'all ain't reach out, but wait the hell up and realize that shit. Oh, <laughs> y'all, are, all this level of stupidity, man, and, and, and we laughing, but man, they get people down. I just need Scott Sykes one more time. That last clip where he said, "Did you die?" Or like, I just can we play that one more time? Because I got to cleanse my palate. Then, we, then we'll come back. Uh, we'll do a little bit. I'm more. not Go gonna ahead, get the vaccine. Then die. <laughs> What do we do, argue with you? I'm not on the debate team. This is a mock trial. Oh, right. Aren't you worried about the side effects? I'm worried about the disease. Well, they're tracking you through the microchip. They're tracking you through the phone you're watching this on. Get the vaccine. <laughs> oh. oh, They're man. definitely tracking people. Well. <laughs> I see out the club. <laughs> 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 Look, it was one of those things. Me in the me. VIP section, being and, and Rebecca on the outside of the VIP section, like looking like, hey, can you let me I in? Like, I thought I was <laughs> coming back with a three shot. That's why I opened my mouth to even see. Uh, hey, he playing with me. You see, you see how he was quick to put me in this one shot. It's it's a it's a fool. Okay, <laughs> but anywho, oh, I don't love. even know what to say no more. Did we um um? They are definitely tracking us. I um, I still look kind of pale though. But I um, I was looking at this video. I don't know if we watched it together. I don't remember because it feels like so long since we last fellowshipped together right here on Like It or Not. But um, I I was actually watching this one video and a woman was with her um, friend and or I think her partner and and uh, they were showing how iPhone actually takes photos of you. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, so mm. they connected it to a camera and with the lens to a camera, and then uh, it was showing literally how it would just capture your face, like if you're holding it or anything else, it would just capture randomly uh, and oh, continue to capture I, throughout the day. Listen. And I'm like, why? Why? Because look, look, and they they worried about this. <laughs> they worried about a mark of the beast. They worried about a, a chip tracking them. And and your your Facebook is listening to you right now. Yeah, if you Instagram got the face. If you in this, especially Instagram, it, listen, 
listen, listen. I was sitting, I was sitting at, a, I was sitting at a bar one time, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey, can I get a Corona pr- 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 pre- pre- premiere? Whichever one is low carbs, because I was trying to do low carbs at the time. <laughs> Lo and behold, I logged into Instagram. Oh, yeah, it is nasty. It's like water. Anyway, <laughs> it's like pee water. It's, like, it's horrible. <laughs> Not pee water. Anyway, hey, listen, we ain't, ain't no promotions Dirty on my the show. Water. <laughs> Listen, I opened up I opened up Instagram two seconds later and there was a, a whole series of ad about this exact beer I was asking for. Y'all worried yep. about being tracked. Please, for the love of God, go get the vaccine. Just just mm. get the vaccine. I've got my second shot. The the, the only thing it did me was I, I, I think I slept like a whole day the next day, right? Mm, and and yeah. of course my arm. I ain't gonna lie, my arm felt like somebody hit it with a sledgehammer. But that that's every vaccine I've ever gotten. That's every shot I've ever gotten. But anyway, like yeah. we, we try to get the out of The symptoms are different for everyone, but yeah, uh, just, you know, take the day off. Some jobs are giving um, people the um, option to have that day off. I don't know about the second shot now. Nah. Mm. <laughs> Can't vouch for that. But when you get that first shot, even though the second shot is when people tend to get the um, s- different symptoms, uh, but yeah. you know the, uh, there are some jobs. So make sure that you ask your job what their plan is when you decide mm. to get your first shot, or when after you have gotten your first shot, they have some hours available that they may not. Not all jobs, but some of them have um, jobs or hours available for you to utilize. I believe for some up to eight hours, some give two days, 16 hours. Um, So maybe if you're able to use that, uh, use it, you know, just in case if you need those days off um, to go get the shot or to recover from the effects that it may have. And listen, some people do have severe side effects. Some people get Mm -hmm. really some people get really sick. Right. But the vast majority of people are getting some standard side effects. They get a little mm-hmm. fever. They get a little chill. They get sore. Yeah. They get lethargic. Right. And and to be sure, there's they, they are tracking down some some serious conditions that have called, been caused. But by by the by the uh, by the vaccine. Right. But they're like six in six million for the AstraZeneca particular case they had of blood clotting with AstraZeneca, right? Or we're talking about such a small fraction of people. And, and all of a sudden, this is the hypocrisy of it. All of a sudden, they, they want to reference the data as if they're yeah. super concerned, these anti-vaxxers. Oh, look, oh, look, you know, five people died from the, the vaccine. Oh, oh, okay, 600,000 people have died from the pandemic in this in this country. Like, like weigh your options here, people. But it's, it's so it, the anti-vax movement in this country is so entrenched in our in our in our country. And it's actually lucrative. There are people who make entire careers out of this. And, and we're seeing this. We're seeing people with platforms actually start to push this message. And it's going to get people killed. Go get the vaccine. You'll be OK. I mean. And and if you're you're not okay, I mean, COVID nineteen is killing a whole lot of people. So you got to take your chances. Do do what you think is best. But the thing I think is best is for you to get this damn vaccine. And we yeah. put this whole thing. Look, behind would us. you rather grow a third arm or be dead? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, men. Third arm, third one of the side arm. effects of COVID nineteen like is arm, impotency. Bye bye. Yeah. Some people would definitely like a third arm, but yeah. it's just not. Why do me? Why do me and Rebecca go? Why do Why do me and Rebecca went through the same thing? Listen, one of the side effects of COVID nineteen is erectile dysfunction. Men, go get go get the vaccine. All right. I was just watching. I was just watching a commercial on erectile dysfunction, <laughs> and the, the the commercial started if you erectile. have e if you or someone you know have ed, and I'm like, what is ed? And I kept saying ed e, and they wouldn't say it until like so the, then I saw like hand and the commercial had like the hands moving up and pairing together like this. I was like, oh, erectile dysfunction, performance anxiety. I was like, no, oh, it's not performance man. anxiety. It definitely is not working from the inside, uh, from your system, your body. Wasn't doing what it was intended to do, uh, so um, yeah, definitely. Y'all don't want all that, yeah. Y'all don't uh, want all listen, that. Yeah. Just get the so, gut, get the damn. <laughs> make sure you get uh, right. Okay, all right. Let's 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 hit Man. one more story. We're going to uh, we'll talk about one more thing. That we're going to go to. Uh, actually, I don't know. I kind of just. Well, I don't even Rebecca care at this Brown. point because I'm thinking about the third arm erectile dysfunction conversation. But she said um, erectile. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about one these these these, these folks. These folks are clowns. Uh, Rick Santorum. We covered him a couple weeks ago when he said what he said about um, um, the Native Americans not having made any contribution to this country. Well, he oh was finally. God, yeah. 
finally mm-hmm. fired by C- he was finally fired by CNN and it took them forever. It took not only an outcry from the public, but it also took um, it also took one of his co-anchors, one of the anchors at CNN to actually call him out. Um, I want us to let's let's take a listen in to what he got fired over in context. If you think about this country, I don't know of any other country in the world that was settled predominantly by people who were coming to practice their faith. They came here because they were not allowed to practice their particular faith in their own country. And so they came here mostly from Europe. And they set up a country that was based on Judeo-Christian principles. When I say Judeo-Christian, the Mosaic Laws, Ten Commandments, and the teachings of Jesus Christ. The moral, the morals, and, and teachings of Jesus Christ. That's that's what our founding documents are based upon. It's in our DNA. You know, if you think of other countries like Italy and Greece and China and Turkey and places like that, they've all sort of changed over time. I mean, they've been they've been there for cent for millennia in many cases, and their culture has sort of evolved over time, but not us. We came here and created a blank slate. We, we birthed a nation from nothing. I mean, there was nothing here. I mean, yes, we have Native Americans, but, if, but candidly, that, that, there isn't much Native American culture in American culture. It, it was born of the people who came here pursuing religious liberty to practice their faith, to live as they ought to live, and have the freedom to do so. Religious liberty. Those are the two bulwarks of America. Faith Proud and freedom. to be an American where at least I know <laughs> I hate Rebecca. <laughs> All that's, right, what so this, that's what I was giving. That, that, that might as well have been in the background. Well, he, he obviously got in trouble for it and he went on CNN to apologize. It wasn't enough, but here's his apology. I misspoke. I was, I was saying, and you, what I was talking about is, as you can see from the run up, I was talking about the founding of our country. I, I'd given a long talk about the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and the ideas behind those. And that, 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 and I, and I was saying we sort of created that anew, if you will. And, and I was, I was not trying to dismiss Na- Native Americans. In fact, I mentioned that because, yes, they were here and they did have an impact. In fact, in this country, you're right. They have a huge impact, particularly in the West and many other areas of the country where they have a huge impact on American culture. I was talking about, and I misspoke in this respect, I was talking about the founding and the principles embodied in the founding. I would never, and you know, people have said, oh, I'm trying to you know, dismiss what we did to the Native Americans. Far from it. Uh, the way we treated Native Americans was horrific. Uh, it goes against every bone and everything I've ever fought for uh, as, as, a, as a leader in, in, in the Congress. <laughs> this man, the sad it music was, is it's the sad it music was to me, for me it's it was Chris for me. for me it was Chris, Chris face <laughs> he listen. didn't flinch one he didn't flinch one bit because he thought if he would have moved it would have shown it would have shown the white camaraderie that they yeah. were scared yeah. Yeah. So he was like mm. Chris Cuomo did not budge. He did he even blink that whole minute? I don't think he, so. d- he didn't blink. He I don't think like, he blinked at all. He was like, I, 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 sorry, I cannot assist you on this oh. one. We once had a, we once had a brotherhood. You know, he got, you know, I got a little black in me. You know, Cuomo said that before on the show, and you know, but he's like, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. So he's just like, oh, man. he stayed just <laughs> his <laughs> eyes. I've never seen somebody not blink for so long. Not like, like, stare, like he was, a stare contest. He was about to blow up. He was about to uh, explode the way he was sitting so still. It, it was crazy. It, 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 it gets better, oh, right? Man. Um, um, I think ultimately it, it took uh, Don Lemon, who occasionally has decent takes, occasionally. It took him going off on uh, Rick Santorum for to finally seal the deal uh, that led to CNN firing Rick Santorum. Let's take a look. I cannot believe the first words out of his mouth weren't, I'm sorry, I said something ignorant, I, you know, I, sh- I need to learn about the history of this country. No contrition, didn't talk about, you know, the suffering that Native Americans have had to deal with in this country. It was, I mean, Rick Santorum, really? Who, did he think, did he actually think it was a good idea for him to come on television and try to whitewash the whitewash that he whitewashed? I mean, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible and insulting. I was sitting in my office furious because he's done it so many times. 
so many times. And it's just, I'm sorry, it was just, it, it was so egregious and insulting and everything that we talk about, about the founding of this country, <laughs> Europeans did not found, found this country. It was here. The Native Americans had this country before the Europeans came. Yeah, the Europeans conquered the country. They colonized it, but they didn't. They, they, it was it had nothing to do with the founding of this country. And he should recognize that. He needs to know that, especially if he's going to be on television, representing us and talking about it. He should be doing it from the right perspective, and not mm -hmm. from some perspective about how I mean, you know what now, Europeans. Don, no, that, that's the wrong way to look at it. I was watching it going. I cannot believe this man is sitting here and doing this. It was like the for Black Lives Matter. It was like Native American Lives Matter moment for me watching that. Ask yourself this once. <sighs> Jesus. You know, you deal with the emotion of it. Why they don't know what to do with are them. things like that so? Crazy. <laughs> and why does he not apologize, but say that's not for me to answer? He probably was texting that's for him, him to answer. Yeah, I had him right on because thing. I want people to Rick. see what this is. There is no mystery for you guys. People know what it is. Chris. No, they don't. No, <laughs> they don't. Because if you just dismiss it, Don, I'm as not dismissing it. He's that's the point. wrong. That's not the but truth. But sometimes people then are wrong. Do, but why do people keep the saying it then? The whole reason, be, because, because yeah. we allow them to say it. No, no, yes. no. You're not and a censor. The, yes, it is. It's I'm because not, I'm not it gains censoring, acceptance. I'm not censoring. And you're saying I'm censoring. I didn't say censor him. Well, you said I, we allow them. You don't get I, to decide I, I who said, says what. I said I cannot believe that well, he you came see, there on goes the, the first words out of his mouth yep. or it wasn't mm. contrition. You're like, for real, for real. Oh, Chris Cuomo. Hey, bruh. You ain't got that much black in you, man. Bro, that right, died that bad. Right. You, you ain't say not a damn thing to, to Rick Santorum. Rick Santorum was on there doing all that, yeah. and he just stared with a blank face. Now you got some get back for Don Lemon. Anyway. He said, Don, Don, what we're not going to do is put the cancel culture on, 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 my, on my boy. We're not, gonna, we not about to, to censor and cancel my boy. Or at least <laughs> exactly. <I'm laughs> and that's what that's what that's what Chris was just giving too. You know, oh, we're yeah. not going to censor. We're not doing that. Who who are we to censor <laughs> Rick Santorum? Who are we here? Who at are CNN me to judge? To uh. ju who are who are you, Don? Who are you, Don? No, no, oh, they man. don't know. They don't know, Don. They don't know. We're not going to uh. do that. He we're not going to do that. What did he, he say to Rick Santorum? That whole that whole first half of that the clip that we just listened we, we, to Rick Santorum apologizing. We, and we played he a little extra. We, we, we played thing. a good stretch and wasn't a uh, thing. He wanted stretch. to hear. See, he see, was waiting Chris, for Santorum to drop, drop this was, the key word. I'm sorry. Exactly. Or I apologize. Or I stepped out of, you know, he wasn't. He's like, damn, Rick, you're not hitting. You're not hitting what you're supposed to hit right now. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. and then and then Chris already had to speak on. His, on his covering of his brother's um, <laughs> mess messiness in, in his community on on the alleged that white camaraderie um, gonna take you down, you, you Chris. See, th this is what I'm talking about. So, because this it, segment, Rebecca, this segment was supposed to be about Rick Santorum. Chris Cuomo done inserted his he, ass he in there, and I was about to put his ass in there. I was gonna make it about Don, but then Chris <laughs> done, he done slid right. Tried right to shimmy his face. ass on over there. <laughs> he came over. He came over with that. I'm proud to be an American energy. Real big. Real strong. Real okay. big. Oh <laughs> um, man. Oh man. Uh oh, so I've got a super chat um from Palatine <laughs> Moore. Let Italy Greek. Yeah, yeah. You, you okay, yeah, gonna, okay. <laughs> Yo, I'll read this. Like China. China. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, Ben. One, one of us going to read it. Italy, Italy Greece, China, and Turkey, Turkey. used to <laughs> practice <laughs> slavery. But then they evolved over time, says Centaurum, but not us, he boasts. And that's from Palatine Moore. <laughs> we got so excited over the Super Chat. We, we was like, we one of like, us going to read it. No, we was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Georgia Fort. She's been covering um, the one year anniversary of the in commemoration of the murder of George Floyd right there in Minneapolis. She's got some updates wow, and some exclusive year. clips. Yeah, it's been a year. She has some exclusive clips from the rally that they had yesterday with Al Sharpton and mm. attorney Benjamin Crump. More like it or not right after this. Whew, y'all killing me. <laughs> Good morning again, <laughs> y'all. We are going to get into some of these. Man, I can't. 
Y'all done messed me up already, boy. <laughs> y'all, we're going to get into some of these new Patreons. Good morning again to everyone. Hope y'all are enjoying the show thus far. Make sure that you are hitting that like button, subscribe, comment, share, all of that good stuff so you know what like it or not is going down. Good morning, Mama and Daddy. Good morning, Sensation. Hope y'all are having a good day so far. So let's get into it. Here we go. New patrons, new patrons. We have, we have Sensation. Shout out Sensation that finally then joined the Patreon, y'all. Uh, thank you, Sensation, for your your, your contribution. Florida boy, brother. Florian Buns, Abigail, Lydia P, Benjamin S. We have Jerry, Reese G. Jermaine P, our new Twitch subscribers. We have B. Jorn Johnson, who subscribed with Prime. We have Jing, Jing Lee Max, who subscribed with Prime. Our moderator, Jam Tomb 63958, subscribed for two months and commented two, mo- uh, two whole months of not missing the after party. Woohoo! Thanks for having me and letting me help. Jam Tomb, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And also, El Moco 70 cheered 100 bits, y'all. We thank you again for your contribution. And you too can become a Patreon member. You too can join Like It or Not. Patreon.com slash Like It or Not. Patreon.com slash Like It or Not. Make sure that y'all join today. Go get into some of this music before we get back from break, y'all. Here we go. I think this might be one of my new jams. It's gonna become a favorite. Y'all just listen. Sticks and stones may break my bone, but your words can't hurt me. Shout out It Getter 9, Chuck Diesel. Good morning, y'all. Tyler, what's going on? Justice Raconis, good morning. And it still can't hurt me. No, it just can't hurt me. No. You just can't hurt me Diallo, good morning hurt me. No, no, no. I know it's hard to be polite And it's easy being fed My mama used to tell me God, I use you with Purple Rain Arts, Nat A, good morning Nat M, Nick, I see y'all, good morning Brother Bryce and Latif It's a female dog, I'm staying ten toes down Though I still might fall Oh yeah, now I done came through Knocking pictures off you walk Loving people who persecute you It's still a tough life Light up on my path and a lamp under my feet Good morning, Alicia, yeah, make sure that you calling in after party Good morning, I mean, happy birthday to Alicia's son Respect, come Turn my other cheek and say sticks and stones may break my bone, but your words can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, Ever Green, good morning, brother. Good morning. More than I've been wrong. <laughs> Afraid not, you are welcome to dance whenever you no, want to. You killed it. No. Happy birthday, Zion. I love that name. Love it. No, you just Brenda Johnson, good morning. Shout out to everybody that's watching us on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're streaming from. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all, man. No, you just can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No. See, it's hard to be polite. It's easy being petty. Mama used to tell me, God, to use you when you're ready. Because I ain't working on my own timing. Ain't got no diamonds on me, but I stay shining. Yeah, yeah. They say the world would be a better place if we take out the hate. Stop all the hate right now. Yeah. Uh, let's keep it real. It'd be better if we just subtract the fake. Are you feeling yeah. Me? So be a light up on my path and a lamp under my feet. I know my faith strong, but my flesh still kind of weak. When that victory be looking like the verge of defeat. And I feel that like disrespect. Help me turn my other cheek and say sticks and stones. May break my bone. But your words can't hurt me. Let's see no good morning. Me. No, I ain't been right. More than I've been wrong. And it still can't hurt me. No, it just can't hurt me. No. No, you just can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, no, no. She look good. You ain't gotta stand in the mirror with your makeup on Cause you know it take way too long I just want to have it right now Girl, you over outside I can't wait just to get this song You want it right now Want it right now Don't take too long I want it, yeah 
yeah. Seven Sweetheart, we missed you on Friday. Don't take too long, get it. Girl, you know I'm impatient. Don't keep a shout out to brother Goku. Shout out to Kane. That's that age dog. If y'all miss him, oh my gosh, freaking the door. Y'all welcome back to the screen. Ben Rebecca and the lovely Miss Georgia Fort Good morning. 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 Georgia Fort, independent journalist, um, covering the Derek Chauvin trial, covering the protest there in Elizabeth, not Elizabeth City. See, there's too, there's so much happening across the country. I'm in the wrong state. Brooklyn Center protest. Um, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing good, Ben and Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no, it's it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I've been watching your coverage, um, and we're coming up, and it, it doesn't feel like it feels like it's been five years. But we're literally just coming up to the. It feels one like two year. days for well, me. No, for, it feels me, like it was so just yeah. yesterday. For me, yeah, it, it feels feel like, like just yesterday. So much has happened in between now and then. For me, it just feels like it feels like forever. But we're only coming up to um, the one year uh, anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, and you've been doing mm -hmm. a lot of coverage there. What What are you seeing on the ground there as we get closer to that event? Well, it's interesting that both of you have different perspectives of like how long it feels like it's been. And I think that's really telling to how people even here on the ground are feeling. It's almost a, a level of exhaustion. You know, the people have been applying pressure on political officials, government officials to make change. And uh, they have been really relentless in their pursuit for justice. And we're seeing that a lot of those uh, pushes and those cries and those protests are actually resulting in meaningful change. Uh, what we saw in Brooklyn Center after Dante Wright was killed during the third week of the uh, Derek Chauvin trial, what we saw was a protesters not only protesting outside of the Brooklyn Center Police Department, but then they carried their protests over to the county attorney's apartment because they uh, recognize that uh, the county attorney is the one who has the power to really make a, a difference. And um, just on Friday, what we heard was that uh, the general attorney for the state of Minnesota is actually going to be taking Dante Wright's case. And he's the one who led the special prosecution team that got the conviction in the Derek Chauvin uh, case. And so people have been very, very busy here. <clears throat> what we saw last summer was protests almost every single day. And then it slowed down as we approached winter to maybe just once a week. But then there was another police killing um, around like uh, New Year's Eve. Dalal Eid was killed less than a mile away from where George Floyd took his last breath. And so, I mean, it has just been one police killing after another in this community, really making it the epicenter and uh, people saying that they're not going to settle for just one police conviction. They yeah. really want to see substantial change in the system of policing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking you, you mentioned the attorney general there, Keith Ellison, um, uh, who has, you know, made a really strong stand on a lot of these issues uh, taking up this. So uh, you 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 were covering one of the rallies that took place yesterday. Um, and, and we have some of the footage that you provided for um, from that event. Um, this first clip is Reverend Al Sharpton as he spoke before we play the clip. Just tell us about that event as, as well as like in the broader context of all the activities that that are happening this week um, to keep the just the movement for justice moving forward. Yeah, so uh, festivities started kicking off, I'd say Thursday, Friday, people just planning different ways to honor George Floyd's life and to say, here we are a year later to reflect back on how far we've come to look at the changes, the few changes that have been made and make a declaration that we're not going to stop until we see the full change that, that yeah. we've been pushing for. And so there was a beautiful art exhibit that happened at a park nearby the intersection where George Floyd was killed. That exhibit was very powerful because uh, many of you know that during the civil unrest, when there was a lot of looting and uh, there was a lot 
lot of buildings being set on fire. Businesses started putting plywood over their windows to try to protect their business, their property. And uh, the entire city was just that pale, you know, wood Mm. color. And so artists came Mm -hmm. out and they started painting murals on those Mm. pieces of plywood. And so uh, two black women uh, fought to preserve all of that plywood, all of those murals. And they, they had this huge exhibit at Phelps Park. It was so beautiful to see all of those murals in one central location you have the george floyd family who has a series of events and panels and and marches that they're planning here and then you have community leaders who are also uh creating some safe spaces for people to continue to grieve and heal at george floyd square so uh, a full almost week uh long uh, uh, of events to honor the uh, one year anniversary of George Floyd's uh passing and uh what we've heard too at a lot of these events is people calling out the mayors calling yep. out the governor uh even when they're present and, and it's it makes mm-hmm. for um you know, this very tense time because it's really uncomfortable to to see them being called out like that publicly. And you can see uh, on their face uh, that they are uh, frustrated and maybe even disappointed in themselves. But community <laughs> leaders called them out several times yesterday at that event, Ben, that you just mentioned. Uh, they called them out because there's still nothing passed in legislation to address the issues in policing uh, that continue to exist today. And we know yeah. that because y- just look at what happened with Dante Wright. You know, uh, the fact exactly. that this mm. man was killed unarmed, uh, you know, uh, just three weeks into the Derek Chauvin trial. So, yeah. I mean, and then you have the Ronald Greens and even outside of Minnesota where it's like this, this keeps happening. And, over uh, and over again. even on a federal level. There hasn't yeah. been change. But, yeah, now, that's the that's the most frustrating part about this. Um, let's take a look at this clip. This is Al Sharpton speaking at the event, and this is footage that you captured yesterday. Um, let's take a look at it. Can you imagine a year later, the Senate is talking about going on vacation and not even giving a bill to answer what has happened. So the reason that we are here The reason that we've answered the call of the George Floyd Foundation and Bridget is to say that convicting Chauvin is not enough. We need federal legislation. Mm, That's it. It was historic. Mm. Yeah. No, no, that's 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 absolutely right. We a, we have to actually get change. And I'm thinking of of, yeah. of the clip of George Floyd's little girl where she was on um, her uncle's shoulders saying how her daddy changed the changed world. The world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to do that without actual legislation. Um, let's let's I want to move real quickly to the Benjamin Crump clip. Um, this is also footage that you captured. Let's take a look. So when we fight for the George Floyds of the world, and the Trayvon Martins of the world, and the Oscar Grants of the world, and the Botham Jones of the world, and the Eric Gardners of the world, and the Dante Wrights of the world, and the Jacob Blake Juniors of the world, and the Anthony McClain's of the world, and the Philando Castiles of the world, and the Jamar Clarks of the world, and the Corey Jones of the world, and the Atiana Jeffersons of the world, and the Pam Turners of the world, and we fight for the Ronald Greens of the world, the Stefan Clarks of the world, Reverend Al, the Sean Bells of the world, And the list goes on and on and on. I say as we come upon the one year anniversary of George Floyd being taken from this earth far too soon in a most cowardly, horrific, torturous way, we must use this opportunity to get the George Floyd Justice and Police Act passed so we can prevent some of these unnecessary, preventable 
and justifiable, illegal, and unconstitutional killings of our people. Too many names. So um, it's interesting to 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 see all of that and hear all of those names. You know, just he and and there are so many more names apart from that. You know, Ronald Green being the most uh, the the most recent one that has been um, uh, the most recent hashtag um, that has been going around. And it's very t- tough to to see that all those names being named. But it's also very interesting, like you mentioned, Georgia, to see that. Um, a lot of these names or the, 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 the most recent ones have literally been over there where you're at, where you're calling it now. We're looking at it like it's the epicenter now. So uh, just 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 hearing that. So now with the, the us, you know, um, honoring um, George Floyd's uh, or remembering George Floyd being taken from us from the police. Um, I wanted you to know, you know, could you tell us a little bit more about this act that um, Benjamin Crump was just talking about, this particular yeah. act that they uh, would like to pass? Absolutely. The George Floyd Policing Act is a federal piece of legislation that they're trying to push. It would end qualified immunity it would also uh, lower the standards of which is required to even just charge uh, a police officer. And it would put some systems in place to prevent racial profiling. The other piece that I thought was uh, really unique about the George Floyd Policing Act is the fact that they want to create a um, registry, like a, a database to be able to uh, track all of uh, the excessive use of force cases uh, and, and so I think that it's a very a 360 approach and mm. it would also eliminate each city and state having to come up with its own legislation because it would be a federal bill. So it would be passed in all of the states across America, whereas we see in Brooklyn Center within 35 days, they were able to respond and pass a bill quickly. However, in Minneapolis, it hasn't been the same. So each city, each state is very different. And passing this federal piece of legislation, I think, would be a a huge step towards changing policing in America because it would uh, make the requirements um, across the the nation. And and that's really what we need. We need a a universal bill that is Mm -hmm. uh, going to enforce accountability when police use excessive force, especially when that force Mm -hmm. is fatal. Uh, This Mm -hmm. also, the other piece is uh, looping in the Department of Justice as well. So uh, in Mm -hmm. in the case for the Minneapolis Police Department, it seemed like there had to be several high profile police killings before the Department of Justice was going to intervene. But through this federal piece of legislation, it would make uh, the DOJ much more accessible in assessing when there's these patterns in police Mm -hmm. departments that as we've heard, some of them, there's potential that they've been infiltrated by white supremacy groups. And mm. so you think about that being a reality and unarmed black man after unarmed black man being killed by police. We definitely need to put something in place to uh, investigate that and find out whether or not it's true. And then when there are police killings happening, we need a system in place that uh, legally allows police to be held accountable uh, when they're right. wrong. And, you know, I, I know that people stand on different sides of the spectrum with this issue. People stand on different sides of defund the police, abolish the police, reform the police. But the reality of it is, I think Ben Crump sums it up uh, very well when he talks about Dante Wright's case and uh, them saying that uh, Kim Potter accidentally grabbed her her ta- her gun instead of her taser. Well, mm-hmm. he always says if it was a white boy, she wouldn't even been reaching for her taser. That's it. You know, and That's so it. even using a taser in that incident was excessive force. Yeah. 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 Even with the Botham Jean case, I mean, uh, for uh, that police officer um, to walk into his home, have access to his home, just open the door, shoot him and say, oh, I thought it was my apartment. Um, yeah. It's just those simple uh, those those. 
those excuses that they actually are, um, you know, making time and space for themselves to, you know, gather with their lawyers to create something else so that they can get off on these cases. I think this would, you know, as you explained, this act or law would would protect a lot of people of color, particularly black people, when they are gunned down by police officers, because it needs to be more. I think this will give us because I know that we were excited when we got the accountability most recently. Um, and now I think this would just be a promised accountability more so something that we know that we could stick by instead of having to wait for that uh, during a trial. I want more mm -hmm. than accountability. So we'll have that accountability part covered. And now we can uh, move on to what's next and that's yeah. given them time so yeah there, there you have one more clip here um from your coverage and um rebecca but to what you were saying it reminds me of what um our sister anoa changa says um she says justice isn't getting these guilty verdicts justice is not killing us in the first place yes you know that's that's what i'm Absolutely. feeling when i was listening to you um this is george floyd's sister speaking at that same event yesterday let's take a listen in my brother has opened all the cases. <laughs> all, the, all the cases that nobody has seen or heard about. He brought them out. And I just want to say before I end that anybody that's going through because I tell you, when this happened, I didn't think I could go on. Long sleepless nights. But you never know how strong you are till you leaning on the one and only. And she's, I mean, the fact that she's a, these families have to show so much strength in these moments that it, it's unimaginable to have to be not only deal with the loss of your loved one, the murder of your loved one, but also be in this spotlight that is not kind. This spotlight is, is not kind. I'm sure they're getting attacks from all these all the people who are like Blue Lives Matter, the thin blue line crowd. Um, just speak about that particular clip. And and you've had conversations with with most of these a lot of these people here. Um, uh, you spoke with Ben Crump and you're speaking to people on the ground. But what what kind of toll is it taking on the family from your from what you've seen? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. They are receiving death threats. And Crump is one who talks about that publicly. Other people uh, don't necessarily feel safe doing so. But we even heard from Tashira Garraway, whose uh, fiance was killed by police more than a decade ago. And she said that she's afraid every time she gets up in front of these cameras and her face is out there. You know, she has a child. She has a son. And so it definitely is. Uh, a sacrifice, but a lot of these families willing to make that sacrifice in order to produce change. And I think the thing that fuels many of them is the fact that they want something to come out of this, something, uh, a, a legacy to leave behind for their loved one that's been killed. And so they continue to press forward in the hope that uh, that this didn't happen in vain, that it can be a part of a solution so that it doesn't have to happen to anyone else's loved ones. Uh, and so it's frustrating to see, you know, uh, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, some of these families. Uh, there is a woman, uh, Marilyn Hill, who has been fighting for justice for her son for over 25 years, mm. 25 years. And she's still asking for the uh, police department to be held accountable. And so when you hear those stories, uh, 25 years, a mother not giving up and saying until her dying breath that she wow. is going to continue pursuing justice for her son. And, and that's why I thought that clip by Bridget was so powerful because uh, Bridget Floyd, George Floyd's sister, said that her brother has reopened all of these cases. Yeah. And so some of the cases from the 70s, from the 80s, before there was even body camera footage that had been swept under the rug, you know, uh, never talked about at a time, even when you think about the idea of media 
calling out the police department and saying that maybe something questionable happened. That that was not happening 10, 20 years ago, you know, and so because we've had uh, cases like Philando Castile, uh, Ronald Green, George Floyd that were caught on camera, absolutely it's reopened the other cases. Absolutely it's made people ask, you know, well, what was happening in the 70s and the 80s before yeah. there were cameras, you know? Yeah. And so I think that uh, these families, uh, many of them, what I hear, they're walking by their faith that they're depending on uh, a power that's bigger than them, that they are asking God to use them in a meaningful way. And that they're really hoping that they can, they can turn their, their pain into power by uh, passing laws, by preventing other police killings um, through the implementation of new training systems uh, or different hiring practices. Uh, many of the families who I talk to are trying to use their story to compel positive change in policing. Uh, and, and some of them with a very uh, hyper focus locally on a city level or on a state level. Uh, but as you see, uh, because of the uh, global reach of Floyd's case, his family is pushing for uh, a federal change. And we know that uh, they're going to be going to meet with the president. Uh, the president has invited them to, you know, come and sit down. And that was brought up yesterday. And I, mm -hmm. I think it was by Al Sharpton. And he was like, you know, that's great. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, but at the end of the day, Joe, we just want <laughs> this bill passed, <laughs> right. you know? Right. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because, uh, and, and I always have to put this out there before I say what I say. And this is in no means way, shape or form to say that any other race deserves to be um, abused for their, their, their skin color, what they believe, their sex, anything, nothing, right? But it's very interesting how we have to hit the streets. We have to um, experience more of our people dying um, at the hands of police officers. We have to put ourselves out on the line during a whole pandemic to, you know, fight for justice. Um, and just for us to get a law passed. But just most recently, they um, passed the um, anti-hate um, bill, I, I believe, a uh, crime bill for um, COVID-19. Asian Americans um, most recently with Joe Biden. So I, I, for me, it's, it's, it was so easy, but we have been literally taken to the streets for a long time trying to get bills passed to protect us from the system, from police officers, just to be protected, just to be able to live. Um, and it's taking us forever. And, you know, now it's like, now Joe wants to have a conversation, but it's like, you know, what's going on. Let's, let's, let's start pushing these things forward. Let's start making these changes. But it just seems to be something that we have to pull teeth to get. <laughs> I yeah. mean, <laughs> You get back to, we have to fight. I mean, people, people are, um, there's a, there is a black lives matter protester. People are dying and getting shot and getting, uh, uh, put in critical condition fighting on behalf of trying to get legislation to change this. Um, Sasha Johnson in the UK, black lives, Matter, 27 year old. She had been mm. receiving death threats and uh, we're going to cover it extensively tomorrow. But just just uh, Rebecca, as you were talking about what we have to do. And then uh, uh, Georgia, you were speaking about like the death threats that these family members are getting. But there in the UK, she was shot in the head. Uh, she's in critical condition. And she, and, but she was that came after all the all the death threats she got because she put herself out there to protest on behalf of black lives in order to get this legislation that is like Rebecca like said, it's like it's like pulling teeth and it's and, uh, it, and in that same breath. And I know that we're going to cover it extensively tomorrow, but in, even in that same breath, how it's being reported is they want to remove that aspect of it. That a very important yeah. I, I hate when yeah. they try to remove the most important parts of the story. And the most important part is she has been receiving death threats. She has been, you know, uh, an activist and, and fighting for the black lives out there. And they want to say, well, I mean, that has happened, but we can't really prove it. She was just at the wrong place at, 
you know, at the wrong time, like kind of they're that trying will. to put that in there. So it's like it's going to be for and it's what, what we have to do is going to be for us to continue to be out there. And for, for her people uh, who are um, with Black Lives Matter or supporting her, um, they're going to have to take to the streets to make sure that the media and the police officers don't change the narrative to make it become something that it wasn't. And to mm. actually say what's been going on. It's very hard for people who are activists, people who are fighting for something, uh, even us who have these platforms or, or Georgia, you being out there yeah. on, on, you know, on the street, you know, getting the stories, um, putting your life on the line. You know, it's, it's very, very, it's a dangerous thing. They don't understand when we are fighting for, for our lives and fighting for justice, um, for, for ourselves, people who look like us against authority, like police officers, um, against that authorities, no, like white supremacists. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a, a very no little a thing. dangerous thing. That's a, that's so. a, Georgia, how are you, you on know, time? Cause we, I'm sorry. Oh go no, ahead. I'm good. And I, and I was just going to say, I think what's really telling is you have individuals, whether it's families, activists, reporters, attorneys, you have individuals who are unifying on the preservation of black life to, yeah. to value black life to in essence, just value humanity. And it's very right. telling to see the level of resistance that is standing against this push. And it's very telling to see how this, this push, this movement has now been uh, misperceived as a, a political radical uh, movement. Um, and, and so I, I think for me, what's been eye opening and all the coverage that I've done is that something that seems so simple and seems mm -hmm. uh, so uh, just I mean, you're talking about human life, right? Yes. Yeah. But there's so much resistance against it. And so I think that what it's opened my eyes to see is just how deep rooted racism and hatred yeah. for black people is in this nation. And that a lot of those founding principles uh, that exist in white supremacy and KKK and all these other hate groups uh, that came after slavery to really try to, uh, to kill us. Right. I, I think that it, it showed me that a lot of those principles and that culture and that mentality has been preserved. It's been passed down and, and maybe it doesn't look like, like the white cloak, uh, but mm. uh, very, very, it's very, very true that those sentiments and those values are still upheld. And it's so deep, deep rooted in the fabric of our nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to me, I really see that as being the resistance behind this movement. Because there's there's really Ooh. no other way to explain it. I think, I mean, if you're having a conversation, even with the people who are saying that all lives matter, well, if all lives matter, then why do we have to keep sacrificing black blood in order yeah. to prove that, you know? Yes. And so I just, it, wow. it, it really is disheartening. Um, and, and we've had some, some intense moments at rallies, at protests, where some of these people who have these values, they show up. And uh, they want to physically uh, display their resistance yeah. to this change that is that is needed so that black people are no longer treated, as Ben Crump says, as second and third class citizens in this country. There, there has to be legislation uh, because uh, uh, otherwise uh, police, I think as a career, what it's turning into is, uh, I mean, it's, it's basically a license to kill. It feels definitely mm. like modern day lynchings that are happening all across this country. And so uh, I, I hope that this meeting with Joe Biden and the Floyd family uh, does produce in in the passing of this legislation. I would really mm -hmm. hate to learn that uh, Biden is meeting with them to, you know, kind of let them down. Photo easy. op. Because yeah, we yeah. need change. Yeah, you're right. We absolutely need change. And, and it's just so crazy. I love that he's meeting with them. He's the president of the United States. This to me um, should have came a minute ago, but we're here now, right? I can't even, you know, knock them. They're going to meet. But it's just so many more things. That, like, that's why I say it's, it's very telling. We had, we, when, jo if the George Floyd murder didn't get 
none of this stuff happened. If we didn't go out to the streets, if we didn't make the coverage what it was, if we didn't force media to follow the rhetoric, that the actual um, videos and, and, and listen to the people who are on the ground at the time, um, if we didn't make it as big as it was, if we didn't highlight it, I don't think that we would have even got to where we were now. I don't think that this would have been a conversation with the president. I don't think this would have been, we would have been talking legislations. I don't, we, we, we probably would have been highlighting more bodies and then just been moving on, moving on. But we stuck with it in this particular instance. Um, you know, and I just feel like when we, when we got the news about Breonna Taylor, when like, th- like our president should be speaking on those things. There's so, m- I don't know why it just, t- it, I don't know why black bodies, one isn't enough, right? There just has to be so many more. And then they have to really see that we really mean it. I mean, if we burn stuff down, they're going to call us looters if we do. But it's like, I don't, I don't understand why it took all of that to get here, but it's just a prime example of we got to do six jobs. Hmm. So we have to do a million jobs to be in, in every in every um, avenue where we're working. We have to literally carry ourselves different and, and, and show that we want justice. And and it's just so much that we got to do as black people and it's tearing us apart. But we still got to get up and fight for this just for us to get a meeting with the president. That's what yeah. I feel like just for us to have oh. a conversation about a, um, a, a bill uh, to protect us. And um yeah. I'm glad that we're here, but I hate that it has to take so, I hate that it has to just be so much. We had to, a life had to be taken and so many more after that. So yeah. many more after that. So Let me. Um, well, and the thing that's frustrating, Rebecca, is like we've done all of that and we still don't have the legislation passed. Right. Mm, right there. Right. Right, right. there. Uh, Georgia, while we have you, um, there's a, a video that we also have of um, just to show you just how how broken our policing systems are and how much they really, how far they really try to go. Rebecca, you have it over there, uh, the information on uh, what uh, Dartavius, I believe is his name. Yes, Dartavius Barnes. So this um, was reported by the Washington Post and this is very sick. Um, Recently on, uh, this was back in April, body cam video uh, shows from an April 2020 incident shows uh, officers literally taking a sealed urn containing um, Barnes's daughter's ashes, opening it without his consent before spilling some of the ashes while testing them for drugs and saying that it tested positive for drugs. And as they went to him to let him know that it definitely threw him off. And we can see in this video how it went. You got too much weed anyways, and it's got to be like in different packaging. It's got to be like child resistant, older proof. Right, like, just, no, 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 bro. That's my daughter. What are y'all doing, bro? That's my daughter, bro. Give me that, bro. Hold up, hold that's up. my daughter, okay. bro. That's my daughter. Okay. What are y'all doing? No, 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 no. That's my daddy, bro. That's my daughter in there. I will. I will. Hang on. What are y'all doing? Don't you know, bro. Y'all can't. Whoa, 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 whoa bro. Whoa. Sure. That's my daughter. She just passed two years. She just passed last year. You know my. Yeah, you know I'm, me. Bro. Yeah. That's her, bro. Okay. No, bro. Uh, let me talk to the bro, officer. Please give me my daughter, bro. Put her in my hand, bro. Y'all are disrespectful, bro. You need to move her arm. Okay, bro. Can I please have my Apparently, this is Dr. ashes that three months got tested positive for meth. Did you get a test kit? Hey, I mean, he showed it to me. It looked blue, but I'll test it again. Bro, give me my daughter, bro. That is something very important to me, bro. Give me my daughter, bro. Please, bro. Please, bro. Give me my daughter, please, bro. Bro, please, bro. That is something very important to me, bro. Please, bro. He said it's an urn with his yeah. daughter and dead daughters. What is it? We didn't show the test positive. But it didn't. So, Wait. so the container, this container, um, it, it was a small urn again. It was holding the ashes of his two-year-old daughter, not an illegal substance. So Barnes has filed a federal lawsuit alleging officers with Springfield Police. 
Yes, who um, alleging uh, officers with the Springfield Police Department unlawfully took the sealed urn containing his daughter's remains, opened it without his consent and spilled some ashes while testing drugs. Now, roughly 47 minutes of body camera footage of the account and of the encounter was published. So there was a this was a lot of time of this man literally telling them people, this yeah. is my daughter's ashes. This is my daughter's ashes. Now, the police eventually released him without arresting him after um, Barnes and his father, who was also present. And at the scene pleaded with office, officers to give back the ashes of Tanaja Barnes and, and she died of um, neglect and starvation in 2019 from the her, her mother at the time and her boyfriend so this was something that he literally was experiencing like this is pain and these people automatically look at this black man and assume it had to be drugs Right. It had there was no other thing, but it had to be drugs and went to test it again. Like it, they they have no. It's just like they look at black people and we're, we're we're worthless. We have no lives. We have we we there's nothing that we're worth but just being in the streets and drugs and thugs. And if you're black, we are going to disrespect you. And he literally was crying and saying to that officer, pleading with the officer, saying that they were very disrespectful. That is my daughter's ashes. What are you doing? That is my daughter's ashes. He, Literally, his mind. spirit jumped out of him. And that man said, and then he went to the other officer. He knew he was wrong. He knew mm -hmm. he was strong and he was wrong. And he still said and suggested that he test it again. He tested again. Here's the thing that, that gets me. And uh, Georgia would love to hear your input on it is um, weed is legal in Illinois. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can even hear it in the conversation at the beginning of that clip where he was talking about, oh, well, you got to have weed a certain amount and it has to be in a certain type of container. So there, there, this entire stop, which could have very well ended with this man dying. Right. It's 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 it's, it's harmful enough. The damage, the emotional trauma that they caused him, but it also could have killed him. But it started because of 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 a weed violation that in a state where weed is legal. So they're searching. They were practically searching for anything they could to make this stick on him. And then they ended up violating the remains of his daughter. It's just, my it's God. out of control. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, George? this, this specific case, it breaks my heart because my four month old daughter, uh, when I was 19 passed away and she is cremated and I have her ashes. And I went through a number of emotions watching that video from, mm. you know, pure sadness and grief to outrage, yeah. you know, uh, the violation of, of human rights. You're talking about like how many layers, like the, the layer of, of torture that, that you put somebody through to yeah. sit there who has already grieved the passing of their child and then to disrespect them and their child's remains in a way where you mistake it for drugs. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there should be something in place where if you're concerned it is drugs, then you leave it alone and ask them to produce a certificate. You don't, someone doesn't communicate to you that they have the remains of their child on mm -hmm. them. And you say, okay, we're going to test it to make sure it's not drugs. Why would you even open it? Why would you even break the seal? Why why wouldn't yeah. you why wouldn't your recourse be okay, well, let's, you know, produce some cert certification that it actually is as opposed to testing the ashes as though yeah. They're drugs. And when you, when you say that this definitely could have escalated to be a, a police killing, you know, the, the small yes. nuances that happened before the police shooting. Could anybody be mad at this father if he responded in outrage, if he That's if it. he responded in, in pure anger and, and started uh, responding violently? I, I mean, no. I personally I would have if you found the ashes to my daughter. And you decided that you were going to open it up, something that I had been waiting until she would have been 18 to do so that I could go and have a ceremony and release her when she would have been 18. And you're going to take that away from me. Mm. And then you're accusing me of I mean, on so many levels to me, this is pure t torture. I, I feel like yes. it, it is something that you would see happening um, in, in war. <laughs> You know, mm. and, and oftentimes when we're looking at 
the the responses to these police killings, oftentimes these sites do look like war and it, it feels like yeah. we're in the midst of a civil war. And mm. I don't know exactly what it's going to take. I don't I don't even know if putting legislation in place is going to prevent that type of heartlessness I from agree. happening. That's I agree. It. And 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 first of all, you know, Georgia, that thank you for sharing that. I know that was really hard. Um and sorry for your loss, but I definitely can feel uh the emotion when you say that. Like I I couldn't imagine being in that space. Um right. and it and I know that if that man was not handcuffed, yes, that he would tear, he would burn that whole and that rightfully he would so. and rightfully so. <laughs> It would be a different situation and he would be risking his life. But like um, someone had wrote in, in, in the chat and saying they not only uh, disrespected him, um, but they also uh, definitely affected his psyche. You know, a man who's still grieving. Um, they, they definitely targeted that, triggered that for him. He had yeah. to he already lost his daughter to um, uh, neglect from the daughter's mother and had to go through that situation, losing his daughter and now being disrespected and, and having his daughter taken away from him again. And his daughter be like, that all is disrespectful. And for that man pleading, pleading, yeah. jumping, almost jumping out of his own body, his hands cuffed, trying to grab for that urn. And, and, and they're, they're just like pulling it away from him. Like, and then going to test it again, the disrespect, but that's how they look at us. They don't see us as people. They don't see us with the emotion. They don't yeah. treat us. And like you said, we're second and third uh, to some, we're not even human. We're not even human. We have no emotion. So they can treat us that way. And there was no way that this man could be feeling this way. This thug could actually have some type of emotion for a child. He's lying and it has to be drugs. And that's all that I see. They, these police officers, um, uh, uh, and I always say this, most of these cases, I do, not all police officers, but we know that um, the the history of police officers and how they move and how they walk is, is always uh, and how they work. It's always literally um, backed by their white supremacist history of um, uh, authority when it comes to police officers. And when it's white police officers, we only see. We only see how they act, um, you know, when we see the, the films and the cameras and our own encounters with them. And we know that they don't treat black people with respect, woman or man. You know, you're just you're literally just another body to them that they can do anything with and they can uh, we, nothing that you say will be the truth. Even if you're literally Ooh. about to bust out of handcuffs, you're about to bust out of handcuffs, screaming to the top of your lungs, saying that you're innocent or pleading with them and saying, hey, I'm human, too. Uh, no, 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 I'm no, human, too. And I love you. I'm human, matter. too. And it's OK. They don't care. They don't care. So what's this is why. Name? This what's is, this that? Is, what's that? Jake? What's, what's the brother's name? Who was there's so many Elijah names. McClain. Elijah McClain. Elijah, yeah, Elijah McClain. That, that's the yeah. brother that I think of when you when you were saying that. Yeah. Uh, Georgia, I know you're going to be covering. Um, the 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 all the commemorations this week um so um thank you for your coverage and everything that you're doing thank um you. we want to have you back to to share anything that you get so just let us know as you get it uh tell Absolutely. the people um tell the people how they can get up with you and support your work Oh, thank you, Ben. Uh, you can just head over to my website, georgiafort.com. Uh, links to all my social media are there. And then if you want to watch any of the live coverage, that will predominantly be happening on Facebook. All right. Georgia Fort. And great job journalist. as always, Georgia. Yeah. Great thank job you. as always. I, I love following your stuff. Great job. I love following Thanks. you guys too. I, I'd be waking up with you guys in the morning and I, I had told Ben, uh, you guys had the whole house laughing when you were going in on the, the oxtails being gentrified. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, so, so since you did it, since you, you broke it, uh, Dwayne, could you pull up that footage real quick? I, you know, cause we just came, we just came from this, this, this oxtails. But, well, yeah, that too, but th no, this is one thing. This <laughs> this Al Sharpton. This is terrible. What is going on with his head? What is oh, going yeah. on? <laughs> it was, I can, it was, no, it was when he turned to the side. It was it's, the side. It was flapping in the wind. It, it, you know the it, 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 it was windy. It was windy. It was windy that day. Bro, he looks like George Washington. Like, like he's like the black George Washington with the with the uh, uh, somebody. But I can say it is full this season. It is. It, it, it's not thin. He's giving me full. It's giving me body. The wave. It's like it's it's good. It's good. Okay. But it's I did look good at work. It. He I, sat know, under like, the dryer with some curlers yes, before he came yes. out. 
<laughs> you it know is, how it is. It's you know flowing it is. in the wind. When you got the curlers in and then you, it's just freshly curled and it's just so <laughs> tight. That's what happened. It stayed right here in the back. And he didn't get a chance to let that thing loosen up and fall a little bit. Oh, man. <laughs> it's only on one side. <laughs> it is. It's a glorious grade of hair. I give I give it to him. It's nice and full. You're right. It's got some life in it. He's still rocking but, the perm. But, but, but he just, he, you could tell when he's traveling without his hair assistant. His, his hair assistant wasn't there to pull that back and, and, and do what he does when he's on MSNBC. But... Ooh, thank you for capturing. Thank you for your work. And thank you for capturing this. Because <laughs> <And> uh, yes. <laughs> this is the only thing that could have brought us out of all the heaviness that we have to cover all the time. Georgia uh, Georgia Ford, thanks so much for joining us thank this morning. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having you. me. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Rebecca, James, we're going to take it. We have about a half hour left. We're going to take it over to the after party. Um, anyone who wants access to the after party, patreon.com floor slash like it or not. Um, uh, James? It's in your hands, man. <laughs> see you guys at the after party. Look, look. See y'all after because it's getting. Look. Oh, okay. See y'all at the after party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will appreciate y'all joining us today. Shout out to Georgia Ford again for joining us. We appreciate y'all and once again. Make sure if you have not already, patreon.com slash like it or not. Patreon.com slash like it or not. Y'all keep us looking good. Y'all keep us looking beautiful. So if you want to keep seeing the show, make sure that you support patreon.com slash like it or not, y'all. We love y'all. Make sure that y'all stay locked. Keep it locked, man. And also, y'all, all my Twitch subscribers, all of my Twitch subscribers, make sure that you whisper us for the After Party link. I don't know what that means, but make sure that you whisper us for the After Party link if you want to be included in the After Party link, y'all. Make sure that you do that. Michael, what's going on? I'm still with my girls, all the boys wear when they pass by.